Be careful when watching. In a world where there are dungeons with incredible artifacts that are every warrior's dream, obtaining just one of them will make you rich. These artifacts are so valuable that entire kingdoms devote all their efforts to acquire them. But all dungeons are guarded by unimaginable dangers. The more dangerous the place, the more valuable its magical artifacts, and the stronger its protectors. And that's where our story begins, with a group on a mission towards a very ancient and dangerous dungeon, where even the flowers near the site are traps with deadly poison. Poisons, so don't touch that, soldier, veteran explorer warns. Stitch Atelier is one of the most experienced guys in discovering dungeons, and even for him, exploration missions are never easy. A knight from the kingdom hired a huge group to explore, and even after two weeks of intense travel, as soon as the group arrives at the dungeon they're about to enter, they didn't even have time to take a crap. Inside the dungeon, Atelier already shows why he's a veteran in this work. He reads the place, goes ahead, and points out to the unaware about the traps on the ceiling. Also mentioning that, as they walked, he heard the sound of trap mechanisms that must be triggered by the wall. Atelier crafts mechanisms and disables all traps. They reach the heart of the dungeon, but to get through this area, defeat the local boss, and be happy. But how do we defeat the dungeon boss? The explorer throws a stone and makes noise, and the dungeon boss appears. They run in panic. The monster spews a jet of fire at the soldiers, but it's futile since the armor and shields have magical protection. The commander orders them to form a shield wall and advanced to defend against the fire attack. They survived the attacks, then the commander asked Atelier to do something about it, so he shoots arrows into the monster's throat and brings it down. But hold on, it's not over. The commander orders them to stay focused. The protagonist is afraid of how resilient the monster is. Arrows alone are not enough. As our Atelier attempts to attack, the soldiers using shields are crushed. The protagonist swiftly dodges but ends up cornered by the dungeon boss. He was about to die, but before that, the soldiers execute a shield wall maneuver and save the explorer. In the monster's moment of distraction, the commander attacks from behind and hits the boss's face. The creature falls, and now it's the knight's turn to act. The man jumps, defeats the creature on the ground. They manage to defeat the final boss of the ancient dungeon, and now it's time for the soldier's reward. This battle left our veteran explorer impressed with this team. Satisfied with the work, everyone heads towards the room where the prize is. What interests them is not gold and jewels, it's the artifact in the deepest part of the dungeon. Dungeon, and there lies the dungeon artifact. Everyone is enchanted by the item's gleam. Unexpectedly, the knight asks Stetch Atelier if he wants to touch the item. Stetch Atelier is an experienced adventurer and knows that the dungeon artifact belongs to the expedition leader, but for some reason, he offers it to the hired explorer to be the first to have a chance to touch the expedition item. In the excitement of having this experience, Stetch Atelier goes fearlessly and touches the demon's ring in front of him. The knight leading the mission observes this happen. The veteran explorer didn't know or forgot that artifacts hold an enormous amount of negative energy, so the knight used him to discharge the ring so he could take it. Now he doesn't even need to pay dearly for the services and will already get rid of the explorer they would have to pay dearly for Stetch Atelier's service. Imagine being betrayed in such a way. The clever ones confirm that the artifact curse has been deactivated and grab the ring, but something happens. The ring starts to merge with the dead explorer. It's a gruesome scene. The soldiers try, in panic, to attack what's in front of them, and it doesn't work. Whatever this ancient artifact is, it's too powerful. If they stay in this dungeon, surely everyone will die. They have to get out now, and all the expedition's efforts will be lost if they don't get the prize. At the last moment, the commander saves the life of the knight who didn't want to give up. They are teleported out of the dungeon and Stetch Atelier falls into the abyss. The protagonist surely died, but at that moment, the Memento Mortem artifact accepted Stetch Atelier as its partner. He emerges from the water instinctively and then opens his eyes. He had been holding it the whole time. No one has ever been so close to death as Stetch Atelier. He'd actually experienced the other side and now returned to the world of the living. When he realizes the relic that led him to death is now on his finger, he remembers well what happened minutes ago. It wasn't a dream. Last Stetch Atelier, my incompetent competent companion. The knight and the commander who organized this exploration mission teleport out of the dungeon with a scroll. Unfortunately, they were the only ones to survive. All the other hired soldiers were buried in the collapsed dungeon. The worst part is that the honorable knight Gerald is the youngest prince of the kingdom, and he organized this expedition to obtain a legendary artifact in an attempt to improve his reputation in the realm. Soon the succession of the throne of the kingdom will take place, and he has just miserably failed. Because of this his reputation will be damaged. Commander Balstock 
explains to Prince Gerald that that artifact was not common, people believe that there are two types of artifacts, the independent ones being the most common, and the parasites. These merge with the owner of the relic and share its power. If the owner dies the relic is destroyed along with them. However, there is a third type, the symbiotic artifact, which are artifacts capable of reviving their owner by their own will, and it would be entirely possible that Stitch is still alive, so Balstock should spread posters in the cities with a relatively low reward, since a high reward would attract too much attention. Meanwhile, Stetch Atelier wakes up after falling into the abyss. He tries to understand how he came back to life, and then the artifact electrocutes Stetch. He discovers that he has merged with a unique artifact. In addition to being brought back to life, the artifact is conscious and can converse with him. The demon's ring says its name is Memento Mortem. The ring says that Stetch Atelier is alive now thanks to its passive soul repair ability, which brought his soul back to life, but his body remains weak. Because of that brat, the great Memento Mortem is now without mana. Stetch Atelier tries to leave the cave and talks to his new partner. Stetch tells that relics usually have one ability, so what would Memento's be? Memento replies that if it were in its normal state, it would be capable of utilizing up to 40 abilities. Stetch Atelier is impressed, as the maximum number of abilities a human could utilize throughout their life is 10, so now he can have so many. Stetch asks which ability he can use now. Memento says none as it is without mana. For now, he will have to rely on his physical strength to escape this place. In addition, the relic tells him that he has another 12 hours of life until they both die if he doesn't recharge his mana. If Memento runs out of mana completely, the passive effect that keeps him alive will be deactivated. Stetch Atelier then questions that he wasn't really revived. Does that mean he is stuck with this artifact to stay alive? Several hours have passed since he was revived. The protagonist, motivated to stay alive, strives to the limit and finds the cave exit. Outside Memento says that before he was sleeping for centuries, even though he woke him up doesn't mean Stetch Atelier is his owner, he will only lend his powers for now. One of his abilities is to eat curses, with this he can absorb energy from other relics and mana from living creatures after defeating them. Stetch uses his instinct and notices footprints, and then the smell, it's a giant wolf and it will be his mana source. The explorer is weak and weaponless to face the creature. Memento advises him to use one of his abilities, the air shot, with the remaining mana he can use at least this ability without exhausting himself. His ring tells him to aim at the wolf and then the rest is up to him. Stetch does this and then the surprise. Sound of explosion. The blow is so intense that it disintegrates part of the wolf. Stetch wonders if this is a basic ability that uses little mana. Memento, proud of his power, affirms that he is not a simple artifact like the others, and it would also be better if Stetch didn't hesitate like a coward when using it. After these explanations, the protagonist decides to use the other ability. He looks at the wolf and activates curse eating. Stetch was betrayed by a prince of the kingdom. That same prince now knows that when he returns home to Venetian, his brothers will mock him for his failure. His brother already has priority to receive the family throne, and now, it has become even more difficult for him to have a chance. Now he will be seen as an idiot who tried to solve the kingdom's best dungeon, and caused the death of hundreds of kingdom soldiers as well. After absorbing the curse, Memento says it wasn't enough, but it was already enough to have absorbed that wolf. Stitch was deceived by those nobles of the royal family, who killed him. Now that he has been resurrected he needs to constantly hunt mana for his magic ring. For some this may be a curse, but for Stetch Atelier, it's an opportunity to seek revenge against those rich people. He goes to the city to pick up his things and some information by this time. Stetch was already being hunted for possessing the artifact and then he must become a fugitive. There is the city guard very well protected by guards. He thinks about picking up some herbs and burning them. His trap was ready he puts the guards to sleep and sneaks into the city. Stetch finds out that besides being betrayed now, he is a criminal with a reward for his head. This makes him more irritated to remember the injustice he went through. After getting his equipment he doesn't know how much the news has spread, so it would be impossible to live in a village for now. The best option would be to leave the kingdom, but this didn't fit his style. It wasn't how he wanted to behave. Leaving the kingdom so obediently was out of the question. Memento asked if Stetch would like to get revenge, and the protagonist agrees, saying that unless he's a coward, anyone would choose revenge. The artifact laughs and says it was finally getting more interesting, with his partner having such noble intentions with revenge, he will have this help. His ring explains that his abilities depend on how much mana is absorbed and if he consumes something with a lot of mana, he will become much stronger. Stetch now knows the path he needs to take to become stronger and be able to eliminate the Gerald from the royal family. In a bar, a soldier asks someone named Dalton if there was any place selling quality leather at an affordable price. Dalton replies that there must be some kind of leather like that in the black market. Dalton notices a familiar face he was taken 
taken by surprise to know that Stetch was wanted. Meanwhile, the protagonist is spying on some people coming in and out of the city and says that big cities like this always have back doors. Memento asks why he wants to enter this city as he thought Stetch would go straight to the dungeon when he heard him. However, the explorer calls the artifact dumb and says that an escaped scroll is essential when in a dungeon, saying that he will be massacred if he enters unequipped and unprepared. This is the same type of scroll that Gerald and his subordinate had used. He goes to the famous black market, a super secret place that few know the location of. He needs to knock on the door and say the secret code. Unfortunately, Stetch forgot what it was, but luckily the owner of the black market is his friend Dalton and is very happy to see him again. They have a lot to talk about and he asked if his friend would like a drink. Stetch rejects, but wants to use a table. He puts the wolf parts on the table. The explorer starts selling the claws, skin and other things. Stetch asks Dalton how much a scroll costs. Dalton says around 600 crowns and is responded to by a request from Stetch. Wanting to borrow money, Dalton rejects the request, but that he doesn't buy a meal. Dalton asks what the hell he stole to be put on the wanted list. Stetch tells his tragic story in the kingdom's most dangerous dungeon and how the king's son betrayed him. Dalton explains that he doesn't have scrolls for that price, but knows a seller of stolen goods who could make a great price for a criminal. Just ask for Clyde and say that Dalton recommended him. Stetch approaches cautiously, and the old man is sleeping. He wakes him up very politely. The stench of this old man's breath can be felt from afar. His illegal products are on the table in front of him. Unfortunately for him, no one is buying anything. To the delight of the drunk dwarf, the explorer is going to buy one of his items. He needs a weapon that he can use in a cave dungeon. The old man shows a pistol, which is not suitable for use against many monsters. He sees other weapons, but none of them seem good. The vendor suggests a hammer, since he is in shape and has muscles. His choice is interrupted by Memento, who reminds the explorer that most dungeon passages are narrow, so such a big hammer is foolish. Startled, the protagonist tells Memento not to leave without his permission. Memento reveals that only Stetch is capable of seeing, hearing, and feeling its presence. With Memento's guidance, Stetch chooses a sword. In a dungeon, Stetch finds himself surrounded by various beasts, and he manages to knock out some without the help of the ring. But when he notices more presences, he points Memento to an entrance inhabited by monsters and launches an air bomb that devastates the monsters and then feeds on them with the curse eater. As he walks through the dungeon, he finds some rocks. With a pickaxe, Stetch begins to mine the azure stones and ends up encountering a trap. The boy said he could take advantage of valuable parts of it until he hears a scream in that direction. Pointing the ring to the location, Stetch tells Memento to illuminate, and then he is surprised by the sight, a giant mineral lizard. Which monster in dungeons is hostile? The creature shoots acid fire and hits his arm. Memento orders him to control himself and activates the recovery ability to regenerate his arm. Stetch knows the mineral lizards and explains that they use their acidic breath to eat minerals and strengthen their bodies using those minerals, so a normal attack would be ineffective. He prepares to launch an air bomb, but is prevented by Memento, who orders him not to shoot because he is in such a deep point of the dungeon that it could collapse with such magic. Now is the perfect chance for you to use that sword you bought. The explorer questions this decision, but is reprimanded again with his artifact saying that it would not be wise to hold on to it, and a medium-sized monster is the perfect guinea pig. Stetch draws the sword and advances toward the creature. He dodges an attack and moves above its head, where he thrusts his sword into its crystals. The artifact orders him to pull the trigger, and so it is done, killing the lizard. Using the curse eater, the creature's mana is devoured, and the boy laments about the sword's ammunition. Even though it was free, it seems like a big loss, as it is very rare, and there are only four left. Even though Clyde made them with higher durability, what would happen if they break? Interrupted by Memento, who says he feels something wrong, the boy focuses his attention on the artifact, which tells him to be careful and not to relax, until another scream is heard, another mineral lizard. Stetch complains about not wanting to spend another cylinder while advancing towards the creature, which tries to scratch him. Just narrowly, the boy dodged, seeing an opening in the creature, which he tries to attack, but is defended by the lizard, showing more experience than its predecessor, especially with its tail hindering him. But Stetch remembers that compared to the terrace, this monster is nothing. Advancing on him with the sword, he tries to cut him, but it is soon shown that this one was more resistant than the other, not being injured by the blow. The lizard punches Stetch, throwing him to the ground. Reprimanded again by Memento who says something is wrong with this lizard, the boy tries to remain optimistic, saying that as long as the monster is a living being, it still has a weakness, but being interrupted by the creature, holding his head and hitting against the wall, the boy is reprimanded again by his artifact, this time for having been distracted in the middle of a battle, but it turns out that it was already part of the boy's 
plan to be hit. He puts explosive powder in his left hand and firefly energy in his right, thus creating a light grenade, hitting an opening to attack the animal's mouth. But before hitting it, a warning appears. The cell activity was irregular, with 95% of the body being affected, so Stetch explodes. After a few seconds, Memento begins to regenerate him and says how he had ordered him to wait and the lizard being magically modified, meaning that someone was in the dungeon and modified it but does not know how it was done. The boy asks the artifact if any fighting monster could explode, but his doubt is answered with uncertainty of a maybe and questioning if he was scared. The explorer says he is not and will move forward finding the way, then activating the ability to find the way, but he doesn't detect anything, not even using animal instinct, until he finds a skeleton. Stetch says that they do not react except if they approach them, but as it seemed to have been here for a while, it is completely petrified. Memento says that this skeleton will explode if touched, so it would be better to ignore it. But as he passes the skeleton, its body rises, and the artifact orders him to run, because everything in the way is exploded. Stetch falls into a crater and asks what he should do if they explode even without him touching them, and the ring tells him to shut up, until the explorer notices various minerals and his greed takes over because with this amount, he would have money for the rest of his life. But when he touches the minerals, sparks start to come out, and Memento discovers what was bothering him all along, a strange mana filling the dungeon which Stetch was not able to sense, and the concentration of this energy was getting stronger every time they advanced, and the more they advance, the more sensitive and explosive monsters they found. Stetch understands and asks if the bodies had become unstable because of the mana, which is confirmed by the artifact, but not only the monsters were affected, every object in this dungeon was being influenced by this mana, and due to the high concentration of mana, also blocking the scroll, Stetch couldn't escape until defeating the thing emitting the mana to be able to flee. Walking for minutes, he finds the door of the dungeon guardian, where he deduces to be the one emitting the mana. Upon opening the door, he encounters a bizarre creature that even with his explorer intelligence was unable to comprehend, but Memento helps him, that's a genie, and that its center was the artifact. In this world, spirits are formed when mana and negative energy collide. They exist only to destroy their surroundings, as they have no consciousness, so they are closer to natural disasters than to a form of life. But how would there be an artifact in the midst of the spirit? Memento tells him that the guardian is the problem, as it merged with the artifact and was spreading mana in the dungeon, thus turning everything into living bombs. Stetch deduces that the answer is simple. Defeat the boss. He advances towards the genie, who throws several blue stones at him, but they are deflected by his sword until one of the stones would explode near him. Memento warns him that this is the part of the dungeon with the highest mana concentration, so the interference makes it even stronger, and at this rate, the sword and the boy's body would explode. After the blows, the boy faces the genie, who prepares energy in his artifact until the ring tells Stetch to run if he wants to live, unleashing a huge energy blast, which Stetch is able to dodge, then seeing an opening to attack the genie, who even though its body is a single boulder, its junctions are weak points, attacking then a stone, but something happens. The stone stops halfway and returns hitting his jaw. Stetch questions how he would cause damage to this thing, and Memento tells him to aim at the artifact in the core, because currently the core and the artifact are fused, so if he uses the curse eater on the core, it will lose all power. The genie prepares for another energy blast and Stetch for an air bullet. Both collide, but the genie's energy is stronger, forcing the boy to dodge, but the energy splits into several parts, which is dodged by the explorer, however, who is almost hit by the creature's fist, which he manages to dodge again. After realizing that long and short-range attacks were not enough, he advances on the monster piercing it with the sword and pressing the trigger, but it shows effective, but only a little, and the genie attacks him again. Stetch is hit and asks Memento why the air bullet wasn't enough to crush the stones, and the ring explains that it's because of mana interference. However, they are interrupted by more stones defended by the sword. The boy laments and compares the situation to breaking a stone with an egg until the genie tries to attack his left with its fist, but Stetch says that if he can't overcome a small challenge like this, he wouldn't deserve to fulfill his revenge. Dodging the blow, Stetch realizes that if he continues targeting the core of the beast, he gradually reduces defenses and will be able to attack with Clyde's weapon, which was able to cause damage. The genie prepares another blow which is defended by Stetch who only has one cylinder left, that is, one chance to hit however. He notices something, the genie is trying to spin with this body. Even being warned by Memento of Stetch is hit by a stone. His artifact begins to try to heal him, and says it may not be the best time, but his body was reacting to mana, mutating. The boy just asks how long it would take for the mutation to be complete, and is answered that if he was in good condition, it would take a minute, which for Stetch, was more than enough. Advancing with everything against the genie in 
a suicidal attack, shooting an air bullet at its core, which is the first attack to hit the genie. However, as the creature protected its core, it was difficult to hurt it, so Stetch stabs his sword into the core and explodes. But that's not enough. The genie prepares several stone stakes to hit the boy, warned by his artifact that he must move if he does not want to die. Stetch is refusing to die, until he realizes the usefulness of the azure ore he had collected before, exploding with the creature. Our protagonist finds himself very injured but on the bright side, the genie's core had been broken and he finally uses the curse eater on it and escapes the dungeon. After fleeing the dungeon, his body begins to recover with the mutation that was gone. Deciding to check his status, the boy notices that his animal instinct improved to level 7 and the curse eater to level 4. When he asks if Memento was awake, a pop-up appears, explaining that the artifact limit had increased from 100 to 150 and his air bullet ability had evolved into air explosion, as well as two new abilities added, including crosswind. Currently, the protagonist is in the process of unlocking Memento's hidden abilities, so the abilities will be unlocked after certain requirements are met. Opening a shop where he has 8,305 mana stored, and in this shop, Stetch was able to buy two abilities, the Curse Aura and the Curse Devourer. The boy wonders which one to choose, but upon making his choice the ability was acquired. The next day Stetch heads towards Clyde's house, where he hands him the sword and says he would like him to fix it, as the weapon had saved his life several times. Clyde thanks him and starts to cry, saying he will fix it and make it stronger and more resistant. As a thank you, the boy leaves his dungeon spoils and his deposit of 3,000 crowns, asking if he could take some extra cylinders. At Dalton's bar, the bartender says Stetch was late, but he is questioned by the boy if he wasn't annoyed by breaking his main dungeon and assumes that the mine he had counted on must have worked well. Dalton says that black market deals were overflowing and asks if the boy would be interested. What is rejected by the explorer, who says he will sleep for a while. Now resting in a bed, the boy calls Memento, who says he feels dizzy. The boy asks if he didn't know anything until he activated the ability, which is assented by the artifact, which says it was reset the moment he met him, so most of his abilities were sealed and he realized something last night. The air bullet is a basic spell without an evolution tree, but it changed, taking on a new form, as if it had evolved into air explosion. A skill made out of the explorer's necessity, Stetch summarizes Memento's speech by saying that he knew nothing about his future abilities, and then he just wants to sleep. After a night's sleep, Dalton wakes him up saying there is bad news, and going to the bar, he finds Clyde very injured, as if he had been beaten up. Startled, the boy asks what happened, but Dalton just says one of his employees found him in an alley. While pouring a healing potion on the dwarf, who is healed, the explorer asks how much the potion cost, and the bartender avoids the question, saying it wasn't cheap. Clyde wakes up, and when asked what had happened, he says it had something to do with Derek's game. All the employees are disappointed, except Stetch, who doesn't know Derek, asking who he would be. Dalton tells him he was a troublemaker they let be because he doesn't cause any big trouble, but as once, Dalton had taught him a lesson for causing trouble to travelers, he must have tried to get back at the dwarf. Clyde completes Dalton's speech, saying he also heard about Stetch, when they were getting his money, saying that won't satisfy him, not until he reports Dalton's friend who has a reward and gets him arrested. This leaves the protagonist completely angry, while the dwarf tells him to be careful. The explorer retorts telling him to focus on fixing the sword, and asks if he needs more money, while he leaves and tells them to put someone to protect Clyde. Memento teases his companion, asking if he was nervous, but he is told to shut up, as it's been a while since the boy hit people for no reason. The artifact asks if he will kill them, which is denied by Stetch, saying he won't kill everyone who made him angry, but they won't get away easily. Meanwhile, Derek was in front of guards, denouncing Stetch, but is quickly rejected by them, saying that Dalton is important to society, unlike him, so they won't search his bar right now, even with a report like that. As it would be rude, stressed, Derek returns to his friends, saying they told him to come back tomorrow. One of the members says the reward is nothing special, being only 400 crowns, and they already have money to relax for a long time, but Derek says he won't be satisfied just getting his money, so he wants Dalton to see his friend being thrown in jail, until they notice Stetch behind them. Derek says he was wondering how they could meet, but he was grateful to go greet him, but the protagonist is so angry he says the gratitude is his, as it's been a while since he fought with another human, and was quite excited for easy targets to practice. One of the members holds his coat, but is met with a punch to the head. Stetch advances, giving a knee to the head of another gang member, while Derek says he was nothing but a miserable 400 crowns, trying to hit him with a punch. The protagonist dodges Derek's punch, and retaliates with a hook to his chin, asking what was the problem, and why hadn't he put him in jail yet. When Derek was close to passing out, Stetch pours a healing potion on his body, 
saying it wasn't time yet and he had messed with the last person he should have bothered. Memento comments that he loved his beer for having that personality, while the protagonist beats Derek even more. The next day, Dalton says he heard that Derek and his gang were walking completely beaten up this morning, and asks what Stetch had done last night, who answers saying he had only done exercises, but they are both interrupted by Clyde, who says he has improved and fixed the explorer's sword. Showing the sword, the dwarf says he added extra weight in the direction of the blade, and used some trap wires to increase the offensive capacity, leaving it quite destroyed even without a cylinder. But about the cylinders, he hadn't been able to find enough alchemists to work on it, so he had only gotten four, but as he knew Stetch wouldn't return to town for a while, he wrote down ingredients on this reference letter, which makes it so if he shows it to a specialist, he would be able to make the gas. Dalton also says he will notify the other branches of the black market about the boy, so he wouldn't have any problems accessing them. Stetch thanks them both, but before leaving he is interrupted by Clyde, who tells him to give a name to his weapon before going, as it was extremely unique. Memento suggests the name Penetrator, which is accepted by Stetch. Meanwhile, in the Venezia Kingdom, Gerald had returned home and was in his room until he heard someone knocking on the door. The prince instructs to ask who it is and his brother Alfred enters. Alfred asks him if it had been worth it, and Gerald says yes, but his brother says that's not what he heard, as he abandoned the front lines, led a stray squadron, excavated a dungeon without approval, and if his father found out, he would hold him responsible, but he tells him not to say a word when their father summons him, as he would provide an alibi. Upon entering the audience, the prince greets his father, who says he hasn't seen him in a long time, but without further ado, his brother begins to speak, recounting that when Gerald heard about the elven rebel army starting a revolt in the southwest, he rushed to suppress the rebellion before it could be notified. But General Endril says this was news to her because as the general of the west, why would they need Gerald to come all the way and suppress a rebellion? Alfred calls his servant Conrad and says his prediction artifact was able to see the situation, the terrain, and inform Gerald that at the moment of his return to the kingdom. Furthermore, the rebels had leaked their plans to invade a class a dungeon and steal the artifact belonging, and if Gerald didn't act correctly, the situation wouldn't end well. The kingdom asks Gerald what happened and Gerald says that except for Vice General Ballstock, the lead squadron was lost, but he was able to destroy the artifact. The king asks why destroy it, but is answered by the explanation of it being a parasitic type, so it would be better to destroy it than to leave it in enemy hands. Alfred adds that Gerald brought the head of the enemy general, which is shown as the head of an elf. Then the king accepts the prince's alibi, saying he should go rest. Meanwhile, Memento says he's noticing fewer signs of civilization the further south they go, and Stetch says it's because of the elves, as the last elf village in the great forest to the south was warned of the approach of outsiders, as they hated humans. The artifact says this means using abilities without Stetch being noticed, so being the perfect place to farm some dungeons. But it's rejected by the explorer saying there are many rumors about how dangerous the elven nation is, while Stetch walks through the forest. While exploring, Stetch comes across a person tied to a piece of wood on top of a rock. Being altruistic, the boy tries to wake the person up, saying he couldn't leave someone in that situation, but Memento tells him to move, as he wouldn't stop him if he wanted to play with wild sponges. The boy notices some hands among the sponges, and before the same thing happens to him, he aims at them and shoots an air blast, clearing a path to pass. But wind attacks prove ineffective as they are made of water, but he uses a new skill, which sends an electric current into the water and then uses the curse eater. After fleeing the scene, the saved man wakes up and thanks the protagonist for saving him. Stetch asks what had happened, and the man explains to him that who else would be eager to kill all humans near the forest if not the elves. The boy asks why the man had gone there if he knew the danger of the elves, but he explains that he is part of a merchant group that was heading to the capital and was forced to cross the forest to meet the deadline until being ambushed by several elves. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and share with your friends. See you in the next video. Bye for now.